Jimmy Antos. Krupka. Race one. Yeah, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up like this. Well, long story short, I got hooked on ski racing at age five, and at 22 I snapped my leg. Not as a freak accident, just because it was part of the sport. It was inevitable. And that wasn't really something I'd questioned until now. Suddenly, I realized that my sport was completely irrational. Why do people do this sport? What's the point? Why risk it? So to help me explain things and figure things out, I turned to my fellow US Ski and Snowboard national team athletes here in Park City, Utah, and I'll let them take it from here. My name is Winter Vanecki, and I'm an aerial skier. Sam Duprat and Alpine Ski Racing. Stacy Yaskill and Border Cross. In 2015, I broke my like humerus twice, broke it, and then eight weeks later, I did it again. In 2018, I shattered my radial joint and like tore a lot of stuff in my wrist. So, and then concussions, a few of those, but luckily no like really lower body. So for now, knock on wood. <laughs> I have fractures in my back, um, torn ligaments in my knee, never ACL. But there's actually a lot of stuff we do behind the scene. In water, we do hundreds and hundreds of the trick first to make sure that we can do it safely. But there are going to be freak things that happen. Like I was training into the pool back in 2017, and you would think a pool would be relatively safe and forgiving. But I came into the pool with my fist in front of my face, just in a weird position and my fist drove through my face, so I fractured this entire right side of my face, had to get two titanium plates put into my face. You saw me like describe the crash, like what yeah, I remember. If you, if you feel like it, I yeah. Don't know. yeah, yeah. So one of my left foot donkey kicked on me, I did the splits, my knee hit my chin, left the ground slightly and got twisted, landed on the outside of my left leg and heard my left leg snap. Um, kind of sounded like if you took a branch, if you were making firewood, um, <laughs> you hear that crack, it's a very similar sound. I immediately knew I broke my leg and I rolled onto my back and it looked like cooked spaghetti and I knew the fence was coming and so I put my right leg down and it twisted and that one was more of a spiral break. But then when I stopped and I sat up and looked and my right toe was facing backwards. My knee was in front of me but my left leg had rotated so I could touch my toe box and my boot. A uh, ski patrol in Italian accent asked me if I was okay, and I was like, no, my legs are broken. <laughs> so that was, <laughs> that was the crash. And you can show it if you want to screen record on YouTube, you're more than welcome to. Okay. I probably won't watch it, but... <laughs> no. <laughs> Aerial skiing is not good for making money. If I did, I would have chosen something else. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. I mean, I've always dreamed of like, my mom was an Olympian, and so like that's always been kind of in my in the back of my head growing up. Um, not necessarily fame. I think part of it is you, we want to be the best in the world. I like that people ask me about ski racing, and I like that people think I'm dumb for ski racing. Like as soon as they like start the cadence for the gate drop, it's like. There's like no wind, there's no snow, it doesn't matter. Like, it's just like you and the course and your board. It's like you versus the mountain. Like a ski race, they literally close two miles of a mountain and you get to go as fast as you possibly want. You, there's nothing else in life that you can do that besides maybe like racing a car. I always said growing up that if I had one superpower, it would be to fly. And aerial skiing is kind of like flying. You're just flipping and twisting around in the air. And when you do that nice jump and stick it to your feet on snow, there is no other feeling in the world like it. It seems wrong to be like, well, I can do this, so why not? Why not? It's always been there. It's, I would say at this point, it's like pretty defining into who I am. I lost my dad to prostate cancer when he was only 40. And so if you want to go out and try doing a backflip safely, like if you have the, the training and everything like that, um, I think it's something awesome to go for, especially since you know, we're only have, we only have this one life, so. 
I'm terrified to get hurt again, but at the same time, it wasn't that bad. I feel that. Yeah. yeah. As awful as it was. All right. I think um, that's all my questions. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. Feels good to talk about it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk through it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I identify with a lot of what you said. Cool. I was wondering if you would. <laughs>